Hi guys, follow me on Instagram to never ever miss any of my crazy updates. Hi guys and welcome to another vlog. I'm driving this, the Mahindra TUV 300. This happens to be the facelift straight away. Let's open the engine bay of this vehicle. Now it only comes with one engine option and one gearbox option, which happens to be a five-speed manual. The AMT has been discontinued. The lowest spec of the 1.5 liter diesel has been discontinued. This is the highest spec, the 100 horsepower. Engine bay is quite compact. There's insulation here as well. And in terms of changes, there are a lot of changes inside this vehicle or rather outside as well. So you can see the indicators. They are actually blinking because I hit the hood too hard. Okay, you get an LED DRL and you get this smoke effect inside the headlight there's a fog light along with the cornering function and you get this fake skid plate up front just to give it that SUV feel a little bit of gloss black finish here as well so in terms of styling Mahindra has revised it this new color also looks quite good a lot of black elements actually in the dual tone you get these black elements like blackened pillars A, B and D pillars not the C pillar you also get this black roof here let me step on the side step and show it to you alright you get an antenna there roof rails which are not really much functional as such and this is a car which is wider as well as taller than any of its rivals however it still fits under 4 meters in length that's why it looks so ungainly it runs on 15 inch wheels the wheels look super duper duper small yeah look at the wheels they are absolutely small but the profile is quite high 215 75 15 that is one of the reasons the ride quality is fab on this vehicle squared wheel arches something like the jeep compass and you know Mahindra does it get inspired by the Jeep Compass a lot. You get a side step here. Yeah, the side looks very, very, very ungainly on this vehicle, especially the rear. I mean, it looks kind of weird to me, but the rear tail light is also new. Looks quite aftermarket to me as well. Meanwhile, you get rear parking sensors, which are not finished in body color. Unfortunately, they look like an afterthought. Meanwhile, you also get a reverse parking camera. There's a side step here and you get this X shaped spare wheel cover as well, which looks kind of funky, but a lot of the parts seem to be coming out from the newer sport, which I think has been discontinued or should be discontinued anytime soon for the sake of humanity <laughs> why do you launch so many compact suvs just focus on selling at least two of them anyways powered by mahindra m hawk 100 actually powered by m hawk 100 mahindra hawk 100 i think anyways uh, there was something also m eagle so mahindra is always good with you know making new names let's quickly get into the last row of seats because this is a seven seater every rival actually offers a five seater and you can see these seats are absolutely useless there's no point of having these seats because there's no headrest on offer under thigh support is in minus once you sit here your knee is definitely going to touch your chest and you know what there's no seat belt either but it's easy to get in because there's a side step here and here i go as you can see i mean the seats are super small under thigh support is almost lacking and headroom is also a premium like my head is already scrubbing the roof meanwhile there's a handle to hold onto and this window actually opens okay you can open this window like that to get millimeter air inside the cabin which doesn't make any sense whatsoever so this is useless let's see if anything better in the second row actually not much because of the last row there's not much space in the middle row either so the door pockets are large enough and here i get inside the cabin the under thigh support is actually quite decent however for shorter passengers under thigh support might seem a bit too much scooped out seat bag you get a magazine holder here as well there's no center headrest there's no center armrest either but the seat is wide so three people can actually sit in and the floor is almost flat as well good amount of headroom on offer good amount of back support as well however leg room and knee room isn't the best here yes you should have just got rid of the last row of seats and given more space to the car because last row is useless no seat beds what is happening what is happening anyways no keyless entry passive entry no push button start stop making noise i'll turn off the lights all right that is done okay door pockets are large enough at the front as well no controls for the power windows here or for the outside rear view mirrors it's placed here this is the headlight leveler this is the eco mode which is the most useless thing on earth if you use that it's like you're shooting yourself in the foot because normal performance is bad in eco the performance is even worse but if you want the best fuel economy well you can do that otherwise it will return a fuel economy of 14 to 15 kilometers per liter which is kind of respectable this is for the defogger and this is for the start stop system if you want to turn it on or off best is to keep it off only i'll tell you why all right over here you can access the fuse box and this is to open the fuel lid of the vehicle no dead pedal which is an ergonomic flaw front seats seem comfortable as well gets this nice sort of leather treatment definitely seat feels nice and comfortable let's quickly get inside so the key ring is actually illuminated here was the key and the doors 
shut with a proper thud yes proper thud okay both the front seats get an armrest which is a nice touch there's a lot of space here in the center console the cup holder there's space for two more cups there's a space for mobile phone these are the power window controls which are in the center unfortunately there's more space here as well there's a 12 volt charging socket there's a usb socket there's an aux cable here as well these are the controls for the air conditioning there's an eco mode for the air conditioning as well and let me just turn on the vehicles here we go I can see it rose to life and the gear lever vibrates. I'll tell you the problem with the start-stop system. When the start-stop system is enabled and turns off the car. Okay, firstly, it shows this Mahindra Rise thing with audio just to tell you that you are inside the TUV 300. It gets voice commands as well. Some features may not be available while driving, blah, 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 blah. Like, I don't care right now. All right, you can see the steering is nice to hold. These are the controls for the audio system. So basically, this is to mute the volume. This is to get into other audio sources. This is for the volume and this is to pick up or decline a call. The horn is decent, not that great. These are the controls for the headlights. These are the controls for the wipers. The wipers work decently well, actually. The spray is also fine. No auto dimming inside rear view mirror these are the controls for the lights yep controls for the lights are placed here and the sun visor gets a ticket holder here there's no mirror for the driver's side sun visor meanwhile there is a mirror here but there's no light placement there there's good amount of headroom here there's a sense of space the cabin actually looks nice the dashboard design is pretty good in fact you get this dual tone treatment this black here there's beige here but extremely hard quality of plastics the glove box isn't that great in terms of size but can fit in the usual like the owner's manual as well as the first aid kit so as you can see the car feels rugged but there is no soft touch plastic inside this vehicle however Mahindra has added a few features so this is a new 7 inch touchscreen infotainment system which is nice to use it also gets navigation and there's radio there's phone there's info in info there's a lot of stuff so it will tell you how it is the distance to empty it will show you alerts as well and you can decide if you want to turn on and off the DRL then you can also get into the e-manual it also gets a reverse parking camera and here we go into reverse it doesn't get adaptive guidelines there are guidelines but they are not adaptive resolution is not the best either getting into home you can see all the functions here there's a hazard light switch here air conditioning works quite well on this car and the instrument cluster is quite basic on the left you get a tachometer on the right you get a speedometer and in the center you get a multi-information display which has been revised and is quite easy to reach you get a fuel meter a temperature meter a gear position indicator distance to empty as well as an odometer which reads 889 kilometers you can browse through this through the twin trip meters as well meanwhile Mahindra now complies with the mandatory government regulations in terms of safety so it gets a speed buzzer at 80 kilometers per hour and then continuously at 120 kilometers per hour reverse assist as well and all variants now get dual airbag this abs on offer as well which ensures that the brakes don't lock however braking performance isn't that great due to the nose dive inside this vehicle good amount of headroom really the headroom is great you also get a light over there at the rear but there is no handle here on the driver's side let's play an audio right away <laughs> Audio quality is quite poor inside this vehicle. It's not that great. I mean, everything kind of blasts if you put it on high speeds. However, at lower volume speeds, audio quality is quite decent, I would say. Now, obviously, it gets a seatbelt reminder now. And along with that, it also gets voice commands. So if I get into first gear right now with the handbrake up. Careful, your handbrake is engaged. Yes, it's telling me that the handbrake is engaged. It also tells me if my door is open, if I'm not worn the seat belt, Careful, all your handbrake is engaged. Okay, now the car has turned off. Okay, now look at it how it comes to life. It vibrates the whole world and tells you, okay, now I've turned on. That is one small problem inside this vehicle because it should not vibrate when it turns on. It should be very smooth. There's no Apple CarPlay. There's no Android Auto connectivity either. In fact, there's no projector headlight. And the person sitting in the last two has to be enemy because he's not going to get any air conditioning because there are no rear AC vents either. There's no projector headlights on this vehicle. So a lot of misses in terms of equipment considering Mahindra offers the most equipment in a car. In fact, the good thing is that it gets lumbar support. So let me just show that to you. Yeah, pulling the seat itself is an effort so here you can adjust the lumbar too meanwhile the key is now a flip key but how is the car to drive well let's get going right away all right we are all set to go into first gear air conditioning off revving the motor to 6000 rpm and here we go the motor revs till almost 5000 rpm 
but this 1.5 liter engine which produces 100 horsepower and 240 newton meters of torque doesn't have great performance because this is a very 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 heavy car it is an extremely heavy car and you can feel that every time you drive this vehicle in fact 0 to 100 kilometers per hour should take around 15 seconds which is a lot considering other compact suvs are much powerful and this is a 100 bhp car still takes such amount of time to reach 100 kilometers per hour it is purely because of the weight of this vehicle yes it does weigh a lot because it is a body on frame chassis it is based on the scorpio's platform and overall ride quality is kind of lumpy because of the body on frame nature however it kind of feels indestructible over bad roads which is certainly a very good thing about the tuv here we go okay now i need to downshift i get into third gear shifts are not the best because the throws are kind of on the longer side it reaches third gear in 100 kilometers per hour rather it reaches 100 kilometers per hour in third gear itself some amount of vibrations can be felt on the gear lever mid-range is decent it's really the low end which excels on this car because drivability is really very good on the tuv in fact drivability is so good there is almost negligible lag lower down but there is no top end as such getting into the top end is just a waste of time and effort and fuel as well because there is no punch in the top end power tapers off sharply post three and a half thousand rpm but you can still go to the red line just for some fun and it will rev but it becomes kind of coarse the motor can be felt a lot inside the cabin and it is not the smoothest of engines no wheel spin rear wheel drive and uh, you know what at ideal you can hear the motor a lot and this motor is just audible throughout it's only around two and a half thousand rpm that you can feel a little less of the engine however get hard into the gas you can hear the motor almost all the time so that is one issue three cylinders well it shows it's a three cylinder top speed should be around 150 kilometers per hour which is decent however there are no high speed manners okay as soon as you reach triple digit speeds it starts wobbling all over the place the steering has no feel or feedback look at it there's absolutely no feel or feedback from the steering yes it is on the lighter side even at higher speeds which doesn't inspire confidence to push it hard and fast and there is a ton of body on offer you come to a corner you turn there's roll there's roll and there is even more roll because the tuv 300 is not about handling okay it is on the taller side the suspension especially the rear suspension is not up to mark it kind of wobbles a bit somehow and you can feel the continuous movement of this vehicle however it kind of feels indestructible due to the body on frame nature which means that ride quality is good at lower speeds and you can fly over stuff but as soon as you start putting it into triple digit speeds you can feel a lot from the suspension of this vehicle there's a continuous movement steering i mean it is such a soggy steering there's so much body run offer and the brakes although strong enough to stop this car in fact there's another tu with 300 so you know exactly where this car is popular in self-drive rentals so as you saw the braking performance isn't that great because there is a lot of nose dive under heavy braking however the tuv 300 is not about pushing it hard and fast it's a practical car because it is the only car in the segment which can seat seven although not comfortably and safely still that said i mean the motor could have been more refined and definitely the handling could have been way better than it already is the problem is that it neither excels in handling or ride and neither in high speed stability either this steering is so freaking soggy but then again there's something we've come to expect from mahindra of late not of late since always almost and here you see i break nose dive yep you can actually feel the movement the clutch is on the lighter side but i just cannot deny the fact that the steering kind of is on the heavier side at lower speeds and becomes lighter at higher speeds so it's kind of a mismatch it should have been the other way around but hey this is a mahindra you don't expect aerodynamics from a car as screwed as the tuv 300 however remember one thing don't look at it as an alternative to modern compact suvs look at it as an alternative to the bolero and this car absolutely shines because definitely it feels more polished than the bolero drives better has more punch on offer as well yes mahindra has five compact suvs in the market right now that is a crazy number of compact suvs to offer you want me to name them then of course there's a tuv there's a tuv 300 plus why do i keep saying 300 is three double of as well all right whatever you want to call it making a quick overtake get into the gas yes there's immediate response because durability in the city is really very nice but getting to the mid-range the motor gets vocal it's not a fast driving diesel engine at all and this comes from a brand which makes a fab diesel engine with the most power in the segment which happens to be in the xuv 300 there i got it xuv 300 all right speed breakers not an issue at all it feels very rugged it's only thing is that the body on 
frame really makes it a heavy vehicle although it is kind of a real suv in the sense that it feels indestructible in the way it drives that said we are discussing about the number of compact suvs offered by mahindra tuv 300 tuv 300 plus there's the xuv 300 there's the thar and of course there's the nuvo sport as well this car is available in five variants i think around eight variants there are three variants which are optional variants for the t10 optional dual tone and what not around the corner look at it okay look at it there's so much roll on offer however the price ranges from 10 lakhs to 12 and a half lakh rupees and in that price you get a compact suv which really highlights the term suv it's a rear wheel drive with a body on frame and it has good amount of grip on offer as well it's not the most engaging to drive or rather it is kind of hairy at higher speeds but it is a car which actually gives you the feel of an suv and that is where this car really highlights itself because if you're looking for a vehicle which is a compact suv yet gives you the traditional suv feel and throws water like this without any hitch whatsoever then it is the mahindra tuv 300 that you should opt for but that said there are many modern alternatives in the market making the tuv 300 a difficult purchase unless and until you are in tier 2 or tier 3 markets where you just want something rugged and with a true suv feel and that is the only place where this tuv 300 shines that's it guys if you like this video you know what you have to do give it a thumbs up that's a like button and also subscribe to the channel i will see you guys in the next video real soon Bye bye. Let's corner. Okay, second gear. Here we go. You see that? <laughs> It's not the easiest. Bye bye.